I'm so glad to see everybody saying hello. Good morning. Nice to see you today. Thank you for coming. We haven't started yet. We're just waiting for 10 o'clock to come around and then we'll be, we'll get going. Where are you all from? I'm from Cape Town. I teach at a school in Cape Town. Where are you from? Hmm, all around the country. And how's the weather? Yesterday was cold here where I live, but today the sun is shining. That's good. It's nice to be able to, um, to chat in the chat box, right? I'm just looking at my watch, nearly time to start. Are you all ready for a good day of work today? Good, good. Morning, everybody. Um, I will be the host for Teacher Fiona this morning. Um, my name is Milani. I have muted everybody in the class for today. Uh, Teacher Fiona will request if somebody raises their hand for me to unmute them. It's just in order for the class not to be disruptive. But if you don't understand anything or want to answer some questions, you're more than welcome to make use of the chat box um, because myself and Teacher Fiona will also be checking the chat box every now and again. So please make use of the chat box. Otherwise, just raise your hand or send a message and I will unmute you to answer a question. Okay, Teacher Fiona will take over now. I hope you enjoy this lesson. Enjoy, guys. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Can you hear me clearly? I wish I could. Well, actually, it's really nice seeing the cameras down the side so I can actually see you. Um, today, we're going to do an English language lesson. Are you ready for a language lesson today? So you'll need your pen and paper to write things down. And... Um, as, as Mel, the host, said, you can um, raise your hand if you're stuck, if you've got a question, and write in the chat box so we can be in communication all the time. Now, if you're on Instagram, you can use the hashtag lockdown school. And also, maybe you could ask one of your parents just to take a photo of you learning at the computers during lockdown school and send it to the project manager Amanda.Callitz, see the, the address is there at the bottom. We love to see pictures of you all learning during COVID. Okay, so let's get started with our lesson today. So um, now, oh, why? okay. So my name is Fiona Beale, and I'm your grade six fell teacher for today. This is what, I'm sure you're wondering what we're gonna do today, so. Oh, my, um, why doesn't my, oh, there we go. Okay, so we're working on the grade one, uh, grade one, listen to me, week one and two CAPS curriculum for language today. And we, we're going to do it like this. We're going to review a spelling rule first. Then we're going to do some work with adjectives. After that, um, Oh, it might not be in the right order, the same order. I've changed some of the things around. We're going to do demonstrative adjectives. Then we're going to find out about irregular verbs and tenses. And we're going to work with countable and uncountable nouns. Now, a lot of people don't like doing language, but it's such an important part of English. You have to know the rules. So what we're going to do, we're going to be using um, Oh dear, mine's going, let me just put that back. So um, we are going to be um, using the stories that we did this week in our listening and speaking and reading lessons for the language today. 
Right, so first of all, we're going to, we're going to learn a spelling rule for the letter C, the letter C. Okay, now the letter C sometimes has a hard sound and sometimes it's got a soft sound. Have you noticed that? Hard sound, cat, soft sound, city. The hard sounds sound like a K. Cat, cot, cut, cup. Okay, as I say these words, you can say them with me. The soft sounds sound like a s, cell, city, cycle. Okay, so now the question is, is there a rule? Yes. Hard sounds work with uh, when the C is followed by an A, an O, or a U, plus a consonant. And a soft sound is when the C is followed by E, I, or Y. There's the rule that you need to learn. Okay, so let's practice. Um, so can you all hear me? Somebody says they can't hear me, but let's do this activity. Now, we're going to be doing activity. So during the activity, I actually want you to do these things. Um, I hope, I, I seem to have everything going on by itself, but I'm just going to go back a bit. Right, I hope everyone can hear. So here's your activity. I'd like you to make two columns in your book. I won't take that raised hand just yet. I, I'm going to make two columns in your book, hard sounds and soft sounds. And I want you to put these words into your into the correct column. Cell, cycle. I'm not going to read them because then you'll know the answers. Okay. So remember the rule. Hard sounds and soft sounds. Right, so I want you to do that and then we're going to go over the answer. Okay, got it? Got it? Now on my side here, there's music playing, but you can't hear that music. Sorry. Are you all working? Are you all putting your work in? Now you'll find that we won't be able to finish, um, you won't be able to finish your work each time because we haven't got time to, for that, but you can always go to the African Teaks, Team Geeks YouTube channel and find this video and work on those, what you didn't finish during the week. Okay, I'm going to give you one more minute for that. And then, so somebody's saying, what must we do? There are the instructions for two columns, hard sound, soft sound, and put the words in the right column. Okay, let's go to the answers now. So you had to make two columns in your book, hard sounds and soft sounds, and you had to put them in the right column. These were the words you had to use. And the hard sounds were climb, crop, crumb, clever, cream. Did you get that? Five hard sounds. They all start, either have a consonant after them or, um, and the soft sounds were cell, cyclist, cute, city, cycle, cuddle, can't, circle, citizen. How did you do? How did you do? 
Did you get those? Did you get some of those? Good, good, good. Okay. Now we've got five different uh, language activities. So that was the first one. We're going on to the next one now, adjectives. You all know what an adjective is. An adjective tells us more about nouns. So instead of saying the garden, we could say the beautiful garden. Adjectives usually go in front of the noun. My granny has a beautiful garden. You got that? Got that? But sometimes it goes after the verb to be. Those are the verbs like is, am, are. And my granny's garden is beautiful. So there's two times that we use adjectives, either in front of a noun or after the noun. Have you all got that? All got that? Yes, yes. Good. Okay. So let's give you an activity to do, quick activity. Okay, we're going to take our story um, about the magic glasses and we're going to fill in some adjectives. I just want you to write down the word. If, okay, just write down the word. And then we'll check your answers. Ready. You remember this picture, children in the garden, to start off with? Mandy drew a something tiger. Think of a word that, an adjective to go with tiger. Right. All got that? A something tiger. Right, some people are writing in the chat box, which is also good. You can do that. Right, next one. Caleb was picking the something flowers. Can you write an adjective there for flowers? The something flowers? I see lots of ideas in the chat box. That's great. That's great. Good. And let's go on. There now, this is where you put adjectives after the verb to be. Their house is, what do you think? Their house is, put an adjective there to describe their house. Right, I can see the adjectives being going into the chat box. That's so awesome. Well done, well done, well done. Right, let's go on. We're going to use another picture from our story that we did for listening and speaking. The loris is, what's an adjective to describe the loris? And that comes after the verb to be. The loris is, Right, people are writing down words, good. The loris has a something bite, if it bites you. The loris has a something bite. What adjective would you use there? Good, I'm seeing good adjectives there in the chat box. So awesome, awesome. And number six, the loris has something eyes and something hair on its face. Which two adjectives would you put in there? Something eyes and something face. I mean, something hair. Good, I'm seeing some nice answers there. Okay. Right, good, 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 good. Let's check the answers now. These are possible answers because remember, you, you would probably choose completely different adjectives to me. Let's see what some of the ideas are. So you had to fill in the suitable adjectives about this picture from our story. 
Mandy drew a Siberian tiger, an adjective that describes tiger. Caleb was picking the beautiful flowers. Their house is big, or you could say small, or you could say white, whatever you like. And then from our other picture, the loris is cute. I think it's quite cute actually, with those big eyes. The loris has a venomous bite. You could say dangerous, you could say um, sore. I've seen lots of interesting quest, um, ideas. And number six, the loris has big eyes and silver hair on its face. Right, everybody, do you think you understand adjectives now? Uh, uh, we're just reviewing adjectives because you've probably done them so often in class. Good, so that was our second language activity. Now we're going to go on to our third one. Does anybody have a question about adjectives before we go on? Okay, let's go on. Now we're going to do countable and uncountable nouns. I'm sure you know about countable and uncountable nouns. Some nouns are easy to count. For example, no, not for example. We say that they are countable. If you can count them, they're countable. So we can see that there's three apples there. They're countable. Apple, apples. They've got a single, singular and plural form. Okay, you got it so far? Got it? Some nouns are not countable. They can't be counted. Can you think of any nouns that can't be counted? Write some answers in the, um, in the chat box for me. Nouns that can't be counted. Nouns that are uncountable. Okay, good. My example is sand, uncountable. And sand doesn't have a plural form. Uncountable nouns don't have a plural form. Okay, so now we're going to do our exercise. I seem to have put my PowerPoint onto go by itself, which is a bit of a problem, but anyway, I want you to make two lists, countable and uncountable nouns. And we're taking our story about Bablu Bear and we want to know if um, the underlined nouns are countable or uncountable. Right. So what about night? Is night countable, uncountable? Questions. One night, Bablu was too excited to sleep. His mind buzzed with questions. What does the sun do at night? How much water is in the sea? Who is the moon's mother? I only want you to work with those four underlined nouns. Okay, got it? Right. So you've got two columns, countable, uncountable, and you're putting words in the different columns, right? Good. Let's go on for another paragraph. So we've got four there. And now in our next paragraph, he just could not lie still any longer. So he quietly slipped out of the den and sat outside in the cool night air. Snow fell gently from the sky. The wind blew softly through the trees. Which of those nouns are countable and uncountable? Right, are you filling in your list? Countable and uncountable nouns. Are you all writing? Kit Leo, are you writing? Good. Okay, have you got all of those? How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nouns. All right, are we ready for the answers? 
give you one more minute. Okay, let's see what the answers are. So the countable nouns are shown in red and the uncountable nouns are shown in blue. Okay, one night, night, questions, son, mother. Those are all countable nouns. Water can't be counted. Did you all get that? Did you all get that? Right. And let's look at the next one, the uncountables are uh, uncountable. The, the countables are den, but the others, air, snow, sky, wind, are all uncountable nouns. Now tell me, how did you do? How did you do? How many have we got there? Did you get most of them correct? Are you sure you understand the difference between countable and uncountable nouns? Good stuff, good stuff. Fiona? Right, yes. Uh, Owetu has a question. I'm just going to unmute quickly. Okay, let's so hear what Owetu just... says. Owetu? Hi, ma'am. Hello, how are um, you? The adjectives, ma'am, can I just go yes. back to uh, the adjectives, if we, uh, like, what can I say? Uh, What's at this page? I got it now, I got it now. Sorry, ma'am. You understand? Good, okay. Great. Right, so we all got our way to you understand countable and uncountable nouns. Good. Awesome. Letu has also raised their hand. I've unmuted them. Okay, anyone else got some questions? Me. Me. Um, okay, um, Mel, you can. <laughs> you can I have I unmuted Letu. Okay, let's see. What's your question? Um, so how do you know if um the things are uncountable or countable? So let's see, um let's look at um here yeah, these answers. Can you count the air? Can you count no. air? No. no. So that's how you know. But can you count den? Oh. A den. A den. There could be two dens or three dens or four dens. Oh, but and mother, they could one mother, two mother, three mothers, but water, you can't count water. You can't count snow. You can't count sky, the sky. You can't count wind. There are things that you can't count. Okay. Okay. Got it? Thank good. You. Good. Anyone, anyone else? Right, let's go on. What's next, I wonder? Oh, regular and irregular verbs. Do you know about regular and irregular verbs? Well, you know that, um, okay, should we just see what Yeah, Sandal also said, asked to be unmuted, so I'm just gonna unmute them to see. Okay, Tandu Tandu. and... Tandu? Yes, ma'am. You have a uh, question? Yes, ma'am. Um, May I please ask a question about the snow, ma'am? Isn't yes. uh, it uncountable, right? Yes, so yes. Does that mean that, let's say I count it by weight or by uh, anything else, but then not by number? No, this only works with numbers, countable. So only with numbers. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Numbers one to singular. It works with singular and plural. Oh, so, yes, snow, you can't really, if you have to pick up a, a handful of snow, you can't count those. 
But if you pick up a hand, handful of marbles or rice, and even rice would be difficult, but you could count it. Um, yeah. Okay. And there was Charmaine. Where was Charmaine? Thank you. Thank you, Tanda. Charmaine had her hand up. Okay. We're going to go on now to the next one, which is um, regular and irregular verbs. Okay. So we are number four now and we've got five to do. So do you know a verb is an action word and a verb's got a tense, right? Run, walk, jump. Okay, everybody good on verbs. But some verbs are regular verbs. What does that mean? Oops, sorry. So a regular verb in the past tense, you always add ed or just a d. That's how you know it's a regular verb. For example, climb becomes climbed, hope becomes hoped, jump becomes jumped, smile becomes smiled. Got it? Have you got it? Let you? Got it? Those are regular verbs. They end in ed or d. Okay, irregular verbs. They change altogether in the past tense. Run becomes ran. Eat becomes ate. You can see there's no rule for those. They just change altogether. You just have to know them. Think becomes thought. Drink becomes drank. Right. So let's do an activity with regular and irregular. So we're going to use our story about Babylon Bear again. And I've got some underlined verbs, and I want you to change them into the past tense and say whether they are regular or irregular. Bablu lies on his comfortable bed. How will you change lies into the past tense? And is it regular or irregular? Quickly write down your answer. Got it? Right. So for regular and irregular, you can just um, put an R or an I to make it go quickly. Okay, that blue stands outside in the snow. Change that to the past tense. How does stands change to the past tense? And is it regular or irregular? You can see all wet to thinking hard there, good. Number three, the wind blows softly through the trees. Is blows regular or irregular? Write down your answer. Number four, he walks through the soft snow. Change walks to the past tense. Is it regular or irregular? Number five. He thinks about becoming famous. Change that into the past tense. Is it regular or irregular? And the last one, he climbs over the fallen branches. Change to the past tense, regular or irregular. You got that? Can I show you the answers? Right, let's check your answers. So you had to change them into the past tense. Lies becomes lay. Bablu lay on his comfortable bed. Irregular. Changed. Got that? Bablu stands becomes stood. Bablu stood outside in the snow. Irregular. Got that? Good. The wind blows. The wind blows. Blue softly through the trees. Irregular. Number four. He walks through the soft snow becomes he walked through the soft snow. That's regular. Number five. He thinks about becoming famous. He thought about becoming famous. Irregular. 
Number six, he climbs over the fallen branches, becomes he climbed over the fallen branches, regular. So do you understand how regular verbs just add ed or t, just a t, whereas irregular verbs change altogether. We got that. All got that? Great. We're going to our last one now, which is demonstrative pronouns. Heard of demonstrative pronouns? Those identify nouns like things without naming them. There are four, this, that, these, and those. Things that are nearby, this, and these. Things that are far away, that, and those. This and that refer to one, these and those refer to more than one. You got that? Understanding? Right, this is my favorite song. These are my clothes. Put that chair outside. Where did you put those books? Right, you all got it. You all got it? Great. Let's do an activity quickly. Yeah. We'll use our story about Babylon Bear again. Why is hmm dear dear tree over there touching the moon? Why is dear dear tree over there touching the moon? What are you gonna fill in there? This, that, these, or those. Number two, Bablu wondered where something stars came from. This, that, these, or those. Number three, Bablu said, is something the tree I should climb? This, that, these, or those. Number four, Bablu wondered, should I climb one of hmm trees or one of Hmm, over there. This, that, these, or those. Right, you got your answers? Let's check. Why is that dear dark tree over there touching the moon? Did you get that? Babylon wondered where those stars came from. Good. Babylon said, is this the tree I should climb? Babylon wondered, should I climb one of these trees or one of those over there? How did you do? Did you get all four of them right? Good. So you understand demonstrative pronouns. That's so awesome. Now, um, the last time that we had our lesson, we had a reading lesson. And I asked you, I told you that I'd love to hear you read something. Read, read something that you've got at home for one and a half minutes in Flipgrid. So the thing is, you would need to ask your parents permission, but Flipgrid is owned by Microsoft. And it's very easy to add this. I went to check this morning and nobody's added themselves reading yet. So I'd really love to hear you. And it's good practice. So let me just go through it again, how you get onto Flipgrid. So you go to www, well, you go to flipgrid.com and you scroll down. You don't have to sign in or anything because we've created this grid with a code. And you look for something that says flip code, grid, uh, enter a flip code. And so then you type in, in small letters, fell reading, one word, fell reading. And you click on that blue arrow next to it. Got that? Well, reading. Then it's going to take you to a grid password. And we've made the grid password lockdown with a capital L, I think. Lockdown. You can just see if it doesn't work, put a small L. And then what happens is you go into this called um, fell reading. Now, unfortunately, you can't see the right hand side, but the right hand side says four topics. 
because we're using this for grade four, five, and six. And you choose the one that says grade six reading, okay? It's gonna be grade one, six reading. You click on the plus sign and you just start reading. Then I will go in and listen. So, oh, where to? I think I did, there, there is, um, oh, where to? You are next to the Razine. Okay, so you did it and it was fantastic. There were only two that I saw, Oweto and Razine. So, um, I've unmuted, uh, excuse my pronunciation, uh, Ruxmia. Uh, she wanted to ask a question. Hello. Where are you? You got a question? Okay. 